Uh, good morning, all together. I'm showing something that actually two students of mine developed on my behalf, Jonas and Marco. Uh, they got their bachelor degree and now are pursuing a master's. And actually, it happened out that they asked me, what can you give us the hardest task you can imagine for a bachelor project? Brave guys. <laughs> well, um, if you work with C++ templates, there are several interesting things. Um, one thing is you don't see in the code what the compiler is actually doing for you. And the other thing is there is some tricky magic happening underneath, especially when you have nested template instantiations, which you almost get every time when you use something interesting. Uh, and if you make a mistake, you get interesting error messages. Despite the lack of concepts, the compilers have become much better in giving reasonable diagnostics, but still, if the uh, underlying library you're using is complicated enough, the diagnostics can sometimes be very, very confusing. And since I'm a professor, I teach beginners, and for beginners, anything that's confusing confuses them even more because they are confused even without any confusing error messages. Another dimension that's always tricky and always exploiting that every uh, uh, pub quiz is overload resolution, which is quite tricky to memorize all the rules going on behind. And if it incorporates templates, it's even harder to know which uh, thing is actually called. So far, uh, the IDE is based on Eclipse. Oh, my errors are a little bit off, but I hope you can see what's about. Is if you call here you call actually two different functions. One is a, a, a non-template function, the other a template function. Depending on the arguments, the compiler will select the sum of them. And then within the template, uh, there's another call where the compiler might not need, uh, might not know when passing the template which function is actually called. But when the template function is called here, the compiler will need to know which you are actually called. But you will never see that in any kind of IDE normally. And Eclipse CDT, like it is, uh, if you use it plain as CDT, will, if you click something like that, it will tell you, OK, there are two options, what you might have uh, mean by the inner function there. And you can select and or see at least the overload set at that situation. But you might, uh, if that, there's more templates involved, you might not end where, where you actually want to be. And again, citing Oliver in, two, I believe it was 2014, we had a pub quiz. I might be wrong with the name, not this year, on tricky things like, uh, oh, we have some calls of functions with uh, templates and uh, an overloaded function y. And guessing the output was one of the tricky things. And uh, I will show you how to actually take that code and know the output without running a co uh, compiling the code and running the compiler. Modulo bugs. And I think we have enough time to demo. Actually, this t I, I did uh, in some other events, I did uh, demo uh, our develop uh, IDE. Uh, with Templator, but you couldn't do it, try it yourself. Now it is available as a preview. We could only release it now because a lot of things that Templator depends on are in the core of Eclipse CDT, and those patches had to be applied. And uh, we have a version now, even with still patched CDT hat, uh, that includes Templator and expect bugs and tell us them. So to actually get that template information view uh, is not very user friendly yet. You have to open show view other and then, then say template. Okay, here we are. Now, it tells me, okay, select something. 
And here we have a simple program to show you overloading, overload resolution with the uh, template function and then to an overloaded print value function. And if I go to main and say synchronize, I will see, okay, there's the print function and this is a template and the template argument is deduced to be int and there's another print function called the template argument is deduced to be bool. That's not too bad. And if I can now click on that, it will actually provide me, render the template instantiation and tell me, well, the font is a little bit small here on this side, uh, which actually template argument is uh, given. And it will even render, okay, there's another function call, and again, we have a template function here that is uh, providing a template argument in that is deduced from that. And I can even click through like that, so I can incrementally explore and end up in the print value uh, without further uh, templated code there. And to make it a little bit more obvious, let's try it for bool again. Again, here I have the print value where, and you see the difference, this is no longer a template function, it's just overload resolution within the context of the template instantiation of print. And it will tell us, okay, there's print value there with the bool, and I don't click on bool alpha because I have no idea what happens if I do that. <laughs> well, I, I can be brave. Well, you see the bool alpha, it's a function, yeah. Here we go. But I have some more to show you, so let's step back. You can easily go there and clear everything. And I promised the pub quiz. And here we go. So for those of you who haven't been at the pub quiz, the, uh, the trick is to uh, guess what is the output. So we, we let Templator do the guessing for us. We call why i, y is overloaded, and because we have an uh, i is an l value, we get the overload with the l value, so the first digit is one, yeah. <laughs> Second one, we got an r value, so we get the r value uh, reference overload two. Now the more tricky parts comes, but see in that rendering we actually see what uh, template is instantiated there, the, the template argument is deduced, it's, F with an I, it's an int ref, and we see, okay, we have another Y. Oh, it's one, yeah. And so on, and so on. Problem is I had to make the font as that big. <laughs> the interesting thing, I also see the, the move things here and the arguments that use, so I have one, two, one, one, two. Two. And I can actually make these smaller to get a bit more overview. So one, two, one, one, two, two, one. And the last one will be da -da. two. Correct, Oliver? Good. <laughs> okay, that was the, the simpler things with the um, function template. <coughs> let's see, we have some thing about the, let's go for this one. So we have uh, uh, some standard library classes. We have a stack using a vector, and we have a, a full specialization of stack for doubles <coughs> that uses a deck. And we have a factory that creates us a, a, a stack from an initializer listed using the arguments. And the problem is, uh, that's one of the deficiencies of the underlying infrastructure. It doesn't work with auto yet. Sorry for that. But if we put our, look at our main and synchronize here, we see main and we see, okay, we have the, the stack of ins, the stack of bools and the stack of doubles. And we can actually click there and see, okay, it uses a vector t, and t is actually int. 
I'll make it a bit bigger. And we have the functions there. The interesting thing is what happens with stack bool. We have also vector t, but vector t is vector bool. And to check that, I'm brave now. Parsing vector is a little bit longer. And we can actually search for, is it really vector bool? And the easiest thing is look for a member function that's not available in vector for other types. So this is actually vector bool. So the, even if it's transitive, it, it can do the overload resolution, not for everything. So I don't be over enthusiastic. Uh, boost MPL is, is no, no <laughs> it's near to get there. But we are working on that. So any, any help is, is appreciated to get the infrastructure underneath uh, improved. Anything else you're interested in? <clears throat> we can even go there from the uh, variables and see, OK, we have standard DAG here as well. And again, the bigger standard library classes take a little bit more. Oh, see, we have a problem here. Uh, so I've shown you PAP. Well, one thing that's also nice, maybe, see, we have a variadic print line template. And let's expand that. We see actually the, uh, the deduce template arguments, uh, character array in double for variadic templates. That's uh, a nice thing to have because it's very hard to spot that in the code. Uh, make it bigger. And we can actually drill down the call, the instantiation chain, not, the, not only the call chain, to, to the print line that is actually never called. But it has to be there and uh, needs to be uh, rendered. Uh, compilable and available. So questions? Impressive. And you might wonder what this little green C here means. Actually, the O stream parameter is not used in the function. And we have another plugin that's quite new and that's uh, new in the uh, preview there. It's uh, checking uh, variables and parameters for constants and suggests adding cons to them. And if I just quick fix, oh, sorry, I need my glasses to fig, figure out where I am. So I can just say add cons qualification. And that's a tiny layout problem. But we get the const. And we get the const on the right hand side, as it should be. <laughs> Uh, that you can configure in the uh, formatter settings. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, and, and you can also set a global setting where you want to place cons and have a safe action so all your cons and your source files will be put into the right place. Right. And if you have any kind of people who want it in the left, well, you just change that option and save everything again, and it's all, all automatically reformatted. And that's one of the great things. I would like to put the standard text through that. Unfortunately, it's LaTeX, and our CDT parser doesn't pr uh, uh, um, parse LaTeX yet. <laughs> and that's more or less concludes my, what I wanted to show you. Let's wrap up with one minute. That's perfect. We visualize the template instantiation and call chains. It's a tool for beginners to get hold of templates. It's. Uh, Shows the code the compiler generates internally. There are other tools who uh, plug into, for example, Clang and actually trace the template instantiations. You can use them as well. They have a better detailed view of templates, but are not that interactive. And we are working on supporting Cena and things like that. But it's, it's a lot of work. And you can download it now. And you can download it there or there. That's it. There's one question. I think we should, we should have the time. From the schedule, I have five minutes more. Yeah. So in the very back, you were first.
Well, the, the template works as good as the parser of CDT works and is able to actually see the code. And it might not see everything a compiler sees, so it might actually work with a non-compilable source, but it all depends on the concrete examples if it might do something useful or not. And we've seen the error messages. If it, it's beyond its abilities, it just has to give up sometime. We work on, on reducing that giving up thing, but uh, it's, it's a lot of work. It, if it would be easy, you would have that for 20 years now. Yeah? When, when do I get this thing as a Visual Studio plugin? What's that? When do I get this thing as a Visual Studio plugin? As a Visual Studio plugin, never from us. <laughs> uh, well, you might, you, might, you might ask them to write uh, to hack Clang to get the uh, complete tracing and then visualize that in Visual Studio. Why not in Visual Studio? Because Eclipse CDT is an infrastructure we work on f for more than 10 years now, and uh, we uh, extend, it has its own C++ parser, which, which makes it independent of a, a specific compiler, but also it means we have to maintain and evolve that parser through all the C++ new syntax, and that's uh, a lot of work. So what we mean, I have to write the uh, uh, um, or just use CVELOP with the Visual Studio compiler. That's possible. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> 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 there were more questions? Yeah? Oh, that's not a, a, a very useful question. <laughs> I cannot answer that. It's not mine. I've got mine still. <laughs> yeah? Do you know of any other have a similar feature? Well, you should ask the JetBrains guys out there if they would steal it or not. It's... Um, Uh, I know of other people who do that with, based on Clang, and there's even visualization on, on top of the tracing that are produced at, at the, as a means of instrumenting the compilation process, but I haven't used them. I cannot comment on how well they work. I just want to point out, it's not the only means to get that information, uh, but it, uh, it is the only means I'm aware of that allows you to click through things like that. It's, it's a beginner's tool. It's for my students. It's not for, let's say, it, I would dream to be able to debug M, uh, uh, Boost MPL with that, but it's just not there yet. Yeah, Jason? I've just downloaded it and tried it on my computer now. How do I submit bug reports? <laughs> <laughs> do you have the right JVM on it, on your computer? No interactive debugging, no. <laughs> uh, just send me an email, and uh, there's, there should be a... a uh, info at cvelop.com email if you don't want to, uh, but you can hit me personally. Why don't you a green ticket and put it in the box? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if those will be distributed to the, uh, to the uh, speakers. I, I think we need to wrap up to, to make the, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.